Now for this part of the question, we're given that x is a random variable and it has this probability density function here. And we've got to show then that if x is between 1 and 4, that the commutative distribution function f of x takes on this form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b and c are constants. So to do this, how would I go about it? Well, normally to get f of x, f of x, remember, let's just see if we can write this here, f of x, the commutative distribution function, is equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to our value x here. And that is represented by the area under the graph up to the point x, the area under the probability density graph. And what we would normally do is use integration, and I will do that for you in a moment, but for a question like this, I can see that this is a linear function, a straight line in other words. So it'd be a very easy graph to sketch, and because it's a straight line, it gives us an easy geometrical shape. I'll show you. If we were to sketch that, it's going to look something like this. Going between 1 and 4, and being a straight line, you can just substitute when x is 1 into here, you've got minus 2 ninths plus 8 ninths, which is 6 ninths. I know that cancels to 2 thirds, but I'll just leave it as 6 ninths. That's that highest value there. The mode, actually, whilst we're here, if they asked you what the mode was, it's 1, by the way. Okay, not that they are asking us that. But uh, then if we put x is 4 into here, you see that you get minus 8 ninths plus 8 ninths, so that's going to be 0. So just join that up, and it's 0 otherwise. So there's our probability density function, f of x, sketched. So when we're trying to find f of x, the probability of x being less than or equal to any observed value in this interval here, we're looking for this area. And what we have here is a nice geometrical shape, a trapezium. And assuming that we're familiar with working out the area of a trapezium, it's the sum of the parallel sides times the distance apart and then halve it, okay? So I would basically do this question from that point of view. But I will do the integral version for you in a moment. So if we work out f of x now as the area under the graph, being a trapezium, we've got that f of x equals half the sum of the parallel sides. Well, this side is going to be 6 ninths, so we'll just have 6 ninths there. And then we've got to plus this side. That's what we get when we substitute x into here. And if we do that, we get minus 2 ninths x plus 8 ninths. So I'm going to write that as plus 8 ninths minus 2x over 9. And then we multiply it by the distance between the parallel lines, which is going to be x minus 1. So if we Add up 6 ninths and 8 ninths, that's 14 ninths, and then multiply by a half, then we're going to get 7 ninths. So 7 ninths there. If we halve the minus 2x over 9, we're going to get minus x over 9, and that's multiplied by x minus 1. Expand the brackets now, and we've got 7 ninths times x, so that's 7 ninths x. 7 ninths times the minus 1 is minus 7 ninths. And then minus x over 9 times x is minus x squared over 9. And finally, minus x over 9 times minus 1 is plus x over 9. So if we do it in descending powers now, so we have this format, we're going to have minus x squared over 9, or minus 1 ninth x squared. So you can see the a value would be minus 1 ninth. And then for the x terms, we've just got 7 ninths x plus another ninth x. That's going to be plus 8 ninths x. And then finally, minus 7 ninths. So f of x is in this format. 
And I did say that we could do it by integration. And if we were doing it by integration, then we would have to integrate from the lower limit being 1 up to x. So we integrate 1 to x of f of x, f of x being this here, so that would be minus 2 ninths x plus the 8 ninths. A couple of terms here, so put that in brackets, and we're integrating respect to x. And in the usual way, if we just add 1 to the power and divide by it, we're going to have, for the first term, minus 2 ninths multiplied by x squared over 2. And then for this constant, we'd have plus 8 ninths x, with limits going from 1 to x. And if we clean this up, we've got those 2's are going to cancel. You end up with minus 1 ninth x squared, or x squared over 9, and then plus 8 ninths x. And again, put those limits in, going from 1 to x. So when we substitute the top limit in for x, we basically get what you see there, which is minus x squared over 9 plus 8 ninths x. And then when we substitute the 1, we have to subtract what we get when we put the 1 through. So that's going to be minus 1 ninth plus 8 ninths, which is going to be 7 ninths. So we'll just squeeze the 7 ninths in there. And can you see that when we expand these brackets, we essentially get what we had there. Let's just put that in finally on this bottom line. Minus x squared then over 9 plus 8 ninths x minus 7 ninths. So that's the integration method, which you would always use if you had a curve anyway, okay, rather than a straight line. But I just felt that that way was quicker. But obviously, it's up to you to decide. All right.